This plant is referred to by the Latin name Smopteris finlaria. The English name for it is Findler's Spring Parsley. I don't know what the Apaches called it. I don't know what the Navajo called it. I'm sure there's a record of that somewhere. One of my leading passions in life is wild plants, specifically the useful plants. Another one of my leading passions is actually history. So ethnobotany is a perfect blending of two of my leading passions in life. And today I wanted to share with you a really special treasure, a wonderful plant uh, that I came upon that really has a rich cultural uh, heritage. Um, obviously there's a lot we don't know about this plant, as with many plants. A lot of the knowledge has been lost, but I'll share with you some of what we do know about this plant. We know that this was a cherished plant of the Navajo. They would actually take these leaves that have a very strong parsley flavor It is fairly strong, but I don't feel like it's any stronger than any other parsley uh, family member leaves that I've tried. So, uh, But apparently the Navajo would take the leaves and rub them through hot ashes to help remove some of the uh, strong taste. And then after that, they would dry them and use them in the future for mixing with cornmeal to make gruel or mush and uh, other corn recipes. We also know that this plant was used extensively by the Chiricahua Apache and the Mescalero Apache, who typically were allies with each other. The Chiricahua and Mescalero Apaches could use this plant to provide nourishment to their bodies. I know some about the history of the Chiricahua and Mescalero Apaches, and you know, a lot of the reading I've done talks about how the Apaches could travel vast distances by either foot or by horse and they never seemed to tire, at least compared to their enemies, such as the U.S. Cavalry. Some of the Apaches were in a war party, and they were getting ready to raid one of their enemies, and they were traveling across a vast distance. Along the way, as they were traveling by foot, they only took a minimal supply of dried meat, and they were traveling, like I mentioned, very rapidly. At night, they would hardly sleep at all. Uh, they might get a couple hours of sleep, and from one of the accounts I read, they would actually lay their head on a rounded rock so that as they fell into a deep sleep, their head would roll off the rock and it would wake them up so that they could be alert in enemy territory. Anyway, when the Apaches were traveling across vast distances, they didn't always take with them a lot of supplies. They had to rely on the environment to provide for all their needs. This was one of the plants they used to do that. Uh, similar to the Navajo, they would use the leaves to flavor things like meat in stews and, and various other recipes. But in addition to that, the Chiricahua and Mescalero Apaches also used the wonderful root. Some other primary accounts mention how the Chiricahua and Mescalero Apaches could travel very quickly across the landscape and they had an uncanny ability to become one with the land. Part of that obviously was knowing which plants to use for food but they also had an incredible ability at blending with the landscape. There are numerous stories about Apaches hiding right by a trail as their enemies would pass by and the enemies would have no idea they were there. The U.S. Cavalry would marvel at the Apaches' ability to travel very quickly across the most inhospitable terrain. They could ride their horses vast distances and when they were in a desperate attempt to evade the U.S. Cavalry, they would many times ride their horses until the horses would die. Uh, once the horses would die, the Apaches would take off on foot and go up into the highest reaches of the desert mountains and they couldn't be found. The U.S. Cavalry could not find them. In fact, the only way that the U.S. Cavalry could beat the Apaches was to use other Apache scouts to find the renegade Apaches. Anyway, this is one of the plants that the Apaches would have used as they were traveling very quickly across the landscape. And this kind of plant was essential to provide them nourishment and energy for their body. You'll notice, just like with other parsley members, this has a compound umbel structure. And it has what I would call the stereotypical parsley leaf shape. Here's another 
specimen of the plant, you'll notice that it is just starting to go to seed with some of the umbels here. Um, some of it is still in bloom, although just at the latter stages. You'll notice, just like with other Somopterus genus members, it has a wing-like structure on the seed. We're going to be digging up one of these roots here in just a little bit so I can show you uh, what that looks like. I'm not going to dig up this particular one uh, because this specific plant looks to be a, like, a very healthy, uh, vibrant plant and uh, it seems to have good genetics and I kind of would like to let that um, be able to propagate um, some more around the area. So I'm going to find a little bit smaller plant to dig up. I'm going to go ahead and dig up this root. I'm not necessarily going to try to get the whole root. These extend down into the earth quite a ways, several inches. I'll try to get as much of it as I can. Oh, I accidentally broke it off, uh, but I did get part of it. You'll notice that Somopter You'll notice that Somopterus finlari has a pseudoscape uh, in addition to the other identifying features. And I must add that there's a number of other identifying features that you would want to be familiar with in order to make sure you have the right plant and not some other plant that looks similar, because there are a couple other plants that do look like this one. And it is even possible some people could confuse this with a poisonous plant. Anyway, uh, you'll notice the coating on the starchy root. You want to peel that off. That root is very moist underneath the skin. I'm looking forward to trying this out. I'm really excited about uh, tasting this plant. When the Chiricahua and Mescalero Apache were traveling vast distances across the landscape, they needed plants that would provide them with essential nourishment and energy. The starchy roots would have been one of the most important plants for them to know about. And this was definitely one of them they used on a regular basis when it was available and when it was in season. So I'm going to go ahead and try it right now and let you know how it tastes. It's very similar to uh, other Somopterus plants. Uh, it is very starchy, very delicious, packed full of energy. Obviously you'd have to harvest a number of these in order to make a meal, but the Apaches would have done that as they were moving across the landscape. They could very quickly uh, grab a plant and eat it, move on, or maybe a few yards later, a mile later, they come across another one, grab it quickly, and eat it on the go. So their diet was uh, one that allowed them to be very mobile. So this is a great plant to know about. I want to remind you of harvesting ethic. It's always best to enjoy the aesthetic beauty of the plant, but it's also all right to enjoy plants with ethical harvesting and really come to know the various wonderful flavors that our bountiful nature provides. The Mescalero and Chiricahua Apaches would enjoy this raw, like I'm eating it now, uh, but they would also cook it. This plant can also be dried and ground into a flour and used to make breads and um, to thicken stews and things like that. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'll be sharing more great plants with you in the future.